of course, watching that storm surge threat as well. Meteorologist Ashley Beatty is over at our backup studio where we're going to be relocating. Ashley, uh, we're looking at that surge threat still, even though we're seeing minor shifts in the track. Yeah, this is what we issue those evacuation orders for. The evacuations are not for winds unless you're in an unsound structure like a mobile home that can't tolerate. This is why we've seen those orders issued for A and B zones in Pinellas County, also for A and Hillsborough County. Those are mandatory and many, many other locations that we're going to continue to update you on over the next several hours throughout this entire event. But I've been getting so many questions about what storm surge is. So when you look at a hurricane, basically it's a really strong era area of low pressure. So the wind is always going to go counterclockwise. Now as that starts to work its way toward land, especially on the right side of the center of this, all of that water starts to get pushed. So if we look and this is the center of the storm and that's moving towards a landmass. In this case, we've got a house here just to show you what's going on. So all that wind is pushing that water as it goes along and we're talking hundreds of miles. This is getting scooped along. Well, it hits land has to go somewhere, so it's going to go on land. Also remember that hurricanes are areas of low pressure, so there's a little bit of a sea level elevation just because there's not that pushing downward motion the way we would see with an area of high pressure. So where does that all have to go? It has to go on shore. And that's why we see those evacuation orders because the latest run with this little bit of a jog toward the west does tell us there's a possibility there could be some areas that see as much as seven feet of storm surge with this in and around the Bay Area. So we want to take this seriously. We want you to get out of the way of this water. That's what evacuations are for. Up next, I know a lot of folks are really concerned about wind damage with this and rightfully so for the vast majority of us. That's what we're going to focus on. If you're not in an evacuation zone or you're not in a mobile home or if you are in a mobile home, you've been told to evacuate because of it. But everyone else, you got to ride this out. You got to secure your house. You'll want to basically treat this like a tornado warning when the time comes and we start seeing these hurricane force winds. Here is the latest track. This was updated as of 11 o'clock this morning. We had this weekend because it bobbled right along the coast of Cuba that did weaken the storm just a little bit. Last check was 130, so we're not talking a significant difference here. But a Category 3 hurricane, as soon as that starts to turn, it's going to be out over very warm open water, and it's likely going to re-strengthen into a Category 4 storm and then continue to move toward the west. And the latest track, again, has kept this coming right up the west coast of Florida. Our big question mark here is does this keep going west? Because if this moves out into the Gulf of Mexico, that's when we see the biggest storm surge threat with this. As it stands, we're going to be close enough to the center of this to get some of that because of the size of this storm. This thing is 500 miles across and because it's over land, you can see how it's spreading outward just a little bit. So within these bands, we're likely seeing probably 40 mile per hour wind gusts here already in parts of southern Florida. Conditions are going to continue to deteriorate across South Florida. The Keys are already starting to get hammered by this. And as that moves toward the north, it's going to continually get worse for places like Miami, places like Naples and places like Fort Myers, where ultimately it looks like this storm could actually make landfall uh, after a possible landfall in the Keys. Let me go ahead and review our future cast for you. So here's the center of this storm again, still moving to the west over the next several hours and then tonight that's when it starts that northerly turn. That's when those rain bands start to affect South Florida. The keys start getting hit by this and again just keeps getting worse from there as this continues to move to the north. Our winds will continue to pick up and by tonight we're looking at the likelihood of seeing tropical storm force winds likely in the Bay Area, but certainly in our southern areas like Sarasota as well as Manatee County. So here are our spaghetti models. Very good agreement except for one outlier which pulls this farther to the west. What's this going to do? It's going to ride through the Keys and then it is going to come right up the coastline, possibly putting the eye of this storm right over the Tampa Bay Area or very close to it. But here's the deal. We do not want to get too bogged down in specifics in terms of where the center of this storm is going. Here's why. As I mentioned, this thing is massive. We are talking about 500 miles across 
and it is very likely that the entire Florida Peninsula sees hurricane force winds with this of 74 miles per hour or higher. So here we go. This is just as this storm is making landfall likely again in the Fort Myers area to time this out for you. We're looking into the three, four o'clock time frame as we head into tomorrow afternoon out ahead of that progressively gets worse. We still see hurricane force winds in the Florida Keys and then as that does make landfall, it will weaken, but it will do so very slowly. So this is about midnight on Sunday into Monday morning. So just as we're becoming Monday, that's likely going to start moving up into our viewing area with the center of the storm likely over Sarasota or Manatee County at that point. Again, there are some fluctuations. If this comes a little bit farther to the west, we're going to see those storm surge impacts highest, especially along the coastline there. Then as that continues to move to the north again right over Tampa Bay. So this is the time frame when we're going to get some of the worst winds out of this. It's going to be extremely early Monday morning. Sunday night already seeing those hurricane force winds, but the strongest that we're going to get out of this, in which case we could see 80, 90, maybe even up to 100 miles per hour briefly in some spots. That's going to be then really early on Monday when a lot of folks are sleeping. So another reason we're concerned about this. It's the timing. This is not going to happen in the middle of the day where you're going to see a lot of these threats coming. Then as it continues to move to the north, notice we still are dealing with hurricane force winds as we head into 10 o'clock on Monday morning. This is going to be a prolonged event. This is not going to be a Harvey. This is going to be a wind event for basically two days from the time we start seeing tropical storm force winds until the time those finally ease up. Then as it continues to move to the north, it will continue to weaken. Uh, seeing a little bit of a delay there, but those uh, winds will continue and it's likely into Tuesday before things really do start to settle back down. Here's a look at our current winds. They're not too strong right now, but they are breezy. They are gusty. We're already starting to see some changes as this storm gets closer to the state of Florida. So right now we're looking at some spots getting some 20 to 25 mile per hour gusts. And as we head into tonight, it's likely that we start getting some tropical storm force winds out of this. So let me time this out for you. This is a more local view of what sort of wind speeds. These are our gusts with the sort of the color as our sustained winds here. So when you start seeing purple, that's when we're expecting near hurricane force winds. But look at the numbers here of these gusts already by tonight. Start looking 30, 35 miles an hour early tomorrow morning. It's really going to start picking up here and there you go. By the time we head into tomorrow night, that's when it starts to get a little bit dicey and we start seeing some of those gusts up around 70 miles per hour in some cases 72. So flirting with hurricane strength and then continually deteriorating from there. Again, these are wind gusts, not just sustained winds on the model here, but everywhere in purple. That's where we're expecting damaging winds. Notice that basically goes for the entire state of Florida where we're not seeing this. This is where the center of the storm is. So you can see how those winds are also rotating around that area of low pressure and near the center of that. That's where we see the strongest wind. So that's why these gusts are up 90, 97 miles per hour. Look at this over 100 in Sebring potentially. These are damaging winds and these are well over hurricane force. That'll continue to move to the north, possibly right over Tampa that I could move over. And then it's the nature coast turn early Monday morning. Notice though, not out of the woods yet, even in our southern area, still seeing those gusts up around 60, 75 miles per hour. It's going to take a lot longer for that to lift off to the north. Back behind that, we still get some strong southwest winds and that could push a lot of water into the Tampa Bay area. That's why even if we don't see the eye moving off into the Gulf, we're still going to get something in the way of a storm surge threat. And that's why those numbers still have shown, especially when we get these southwest winds behind it, we're funneling that right into the bay. There's nowhere for that water to go but over land. So that's why those numbers have come up to around five to seven in many locations. So watching that very closely, just to kind of zoom out and show you the same idea as we head through the state. There's the center of that storm moving over the Keys, likely expecting a landfall over Fort Myers. And then you can see that storm moving up there with those winds continuing to remain in place behind it. I want to show you the models because they have really come into agreement on this. We looked at the spaghetti plots just a few minutes ago, and now what we're getting is this pulls away from Cuba, both the GFS as well as the European 
saying it's definitely a West Coast event. And in fact, the latest European run jogs it a little bit further to the West, which again is definitely giving us cause for concern. It's bad enough if it moves right up over land. If it moves into the Gulf, that increases our storm surge threat and it increases it big time. So we are going to have to watch that as we uh, really closely track this out. So here we go. This is Monday morning. This is when the eye wall starts to impact the area. That's when we get the strongest winds, but it's going to get bad already by much of the day on Sunday. Here's the eye in that area, in that very small area, winds are actually going to be significantly lighter. You may even look up and see a little bit of sunshine coming through, but within the span of a very short time, 10, 15 minutes, you're going to see those winds coming at you really hard from the opposite direction once again. So just want to give you that heads up since this could pass over areas in Tampa Bay. If you have never been through a hurricane before, if you're maybe new to the area, we've got a lot of newcomers here in the state of Florida since our last substantial impact from one of these. It's 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 a big event and it's a prolonged event and in the center of this storm, it's much calmer than the winds immediately surrounding it. So don't think that it's over and done with just because things have eased up. We've still got to get through the back half of this, and that is likely going to take us into late Monday. We'll still see gusty winds, but by that point they will start to come down, and then Tuesday looks significantly calmer. That'll continue to move off to the north. I've gotten a couple of questions about Jose. I want to go ahead and put your fears at ease. That's going to stay out at sea. That is not going to be something that we deal with, and then by Wednesday we start to see things really getting back to normal. All right, so this is just outlined for the coast here, but we've got hurricane warnings all through the Tampa Bay area that extends all the way into the Keys and still we're dealing with that in Cuba. Look at the massive size of this storm. So again, I'm just showing you a satellite view of this to show you that some of these outer influences are already starting to work their way into the Tampa Bay area. Again, we are talking about a storm that is 500 miles across. So just to stress once again, landfall where the center of that storm moves on shore, do not get too bogged down in specifics there. This is going to be something that impacts the entire state of Florida. About the only places that we can rule out seeing hurricane force winds are areas in the western panhandle. Aside from that, if you are in the Florida peninsula, you are going to see winds up over 70 miles per hour. Don't want to go too long without showing you the track, so I want to bring this back. If you're just tuning in with us, here is the very latest. Winds are now at 125 miles per hour. Since our last advisory, it has weakened, but it has weakened very little. So we are still talking about a Category 3 hurricane, still a major hurricane, and we're going to see this strengthen again as it peels away from Cuba and moves back over the warm waters just south of Florida. The first target is going to be the Florida Keys. That's where we're expecting category four storm winds likely around 100 miles per hour. 